I'm seriously attracted to the stuff in your trailer. How do you make money for nothing? Is it a trampoline or a bed? Well, if we get out, we can have a jump on it. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. They are ready to be re-loved again, don't you think? That's why entrepreneur Sarah Moore wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. Wow, what a retro-looking thing. I love old stuff. Finding it, buying it and reusing it. And I've turned that passion into a business. Transforming items that nobody wants into things that I can sell for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... Oh, what have you got? They are a bit weird, aren't they? I love them. She can transform her finds into desirable... It's giving me goosebumps. I think it's lovely. Valuable... Wow, they look amazing. And hopefully saleable items. You have done all the right things to that. If Sarah is successful, then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. £370. That's amazing. There's a frenzy of flinging at the Beaconsfield Recycling Centre in Buckinghamshire, where there's a skip for wood, metal and white goods. White goods and black microwaves. But here to stop stuff hitting the skips is expert upcycler Sarah Moore. Well, I've got this bay covered. I'm slightly worried about the 28 other ones. What happens if I miss something over there? I'm going to cover some ground today. Sarah has special permission to hunt for three skip-bound items. It looks like you've been having a good sort-out. That can be whisked away and sold on for cash. That was so sweet. I've just been given these. They're absolutely... They smell beautiful. I just didn't know people cared that much. What are you doing? Sorry? They're not for you. OK. Stick them in the skip. Just in the skip. What do you think you're playing at? Awkward. Really awkward. Mark's arrived. But will he be nice enough to give Sarah what he's got? Hello there. Hi. Hi. Sorry to bother you. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hello. Hi Hi there. I'm Mark. Mark, those are enormous logs. Yeah. Are they, yeah, um, yeah. Are they yew trees? Uh, yeah, this was a yew tree from my garden. Wow. Um, and so is that, is that a little bit of a garden project going on? Uh, yeah, a bit of landscaping going on. A uh, new summer house. Um, yeah, just clearing some space. We've got quite a few trees, so... There's a huge amount of timber there, and is it really heavy? Uh, very. If you cut one of these down, you don't need to go to the gym, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It looks like some kind of cabotossing competition has gone on round yeah, here. Yeah, it's not going to go far. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. Well, funny you should say that. Would you mind if, I, instead of it going on a journey that way, that um, I took it away and tried to do something if with you it? Can carry it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a shame to waste it. Um, absolutely. Perfect use for something. Fantastic. I'm going to go and find some strong friends yeah. um, back in a minute, but lovely to meet you. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks again. No okay. Bye bye. Sarah's got herself great big hunks of tree trunk. What do you think she'll do with them, Mark? In my head, the only thing I can think of is sculpture y thing, but that's probably why I'm not an artist. <laughs> One way or the other, I'm going to do my best to make something really beautiful out of this stuff. Because through and through, I love you. Let's try and keep this professional, Sarah. So, who will be taking on the you? Here's a clue. It's wood-turning wonder Chris Fisher, the UK's only accredited blind wood-turner. Chris handcrafts everything from homewares to sculptural items producing wooden works of art. After losing my sight, I took up wood turning and it was to challenge myself and start a new journey. I, I chose wood turning because I wanted a vampire steak. I'm a huge horror film fan uh, and I wanted a Halloween prop. So it was wood turning. I love turning a mental image into something tactile, beautiful. I love the information that the machine gives back to me. It's like riding a motorcycle. I feel it through my fingertips. I love it. Well, Chris, there's a lot of timber coming your way. The question is, are you up for the challenge?
With one item taking a trip to be transformed... That cab's not for me. I'm not going anywhere. Sarah's back on the hunt for two more things. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking about the double yolk I got in an egg this morning. We just throw away too much. Of course, yes, that's important, but still, a doubler. Agent's arrived, but will Sarah think what he has is worth saving? Hello there. Hello there. I was just looking, you have got a, what is it, a car full of tents? Tents, yeah, old scout tents. There is, there is a monumental amount of tentage yeah, in there. Lots of tents, yeah. We don't use these anymore and we haven't for years. They're really difficult to use, aren't they? Yeah, They're heavy they and yeah. uh, the, the modern ones are lice of feather, easy yeah. to put up. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, easy to dry out, easy to put up. Um, these are just too heavy and the scout's getting smaller. <laughs> um, so they can't carry them. So, uh, yeah, so unfortunately, we're going to have to recycle them here. They are something I think could be repurposed. Any okay. chance I could take yeah. a couple away? Yeah, crack on, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're getting rid of them, so whatever you can do with them. And I, I'd love to see them repurposed as something. Excellent. Um, I'll grab a trolley and come and pick some up. Lovely, thank you very really much. Really nice to meet you. OK, thank lovely, you so thank you. Sarah's got her hands on a load of old tents. Adrian, any thoughts on what she might do with them? No, I don't know, really. Um, yeah, apart from tents, I can't think of anything else that they could be, but uh, I'll, I'll wait to be surprised. I've got bags, I've got canvas, I've got hessian. Looks like I've got ropes, poles, metal bits, wooden dollies. It's got huge potential, but part of my job that is really difficult is deciding which direction to send this lot. So, which way is Sarah's crafty compass pointing for this project? With Neil Rag, no materials off limits when it comes to bag making. His clever cuts and sensational stitching can usually transform the most unlikely fabrics into fabulous bags and accessories. I love bags. I don't know, it's just a thing that you can't have too many of. There needs to be the right one for the right occasion. I like designing bags that really fit a function. So if it's outdoors, if it's high street, if it's jungle, I love making different bags for different occasions. I love sewing because you're creating something from nothing. What didn't used to be there is now there and it's gonna last a long time. The simple sewing machine is an amazing tool. Uh, I really enjoy creating something and, and watching it lead a new life. Neil's no stranger to repurposing, but will he manage to make light work of this heavy canvas? With two items found... A lot of gardening going on this week. Sarah's back on the hunt for one more thing she can work on herself. Ooh, it's not often you see one of the beetles at the recycling centre, is it? It's just a day in the life of an upcycler. Gavin's turned up, but does he have the special something to complete Sarah's search? Hi, Hello. how do you do? Hi, I'm Hi. Sarah, how do you do? Hello, Gavin. Sorry to attack you when you're busy um, recycling. I was just thinking it's a very elegant piece of furniture. Have you had it long? Um, well, yes, it's been in the family for a long time. It was my mother's bedroom bedside table, um, right. which she used for many years and then when she died, it came to me, and it was being used for the same thing as a bedside table for about the last 30 years, I suppose. We're kind of modernising a bit, so this just doesn't fit with the, uh, the new look. I think mm. it's stretching out well over the 100 mm. years old, and yeah. it obviously is something that I think is too good to end up in that skip. Would it be OK if I took it away? You're welcome to it. Lovely. Well, um, I will wheel it off, but if it can be restored or rehomed, can I come and find you and tell you what's happened to it? OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Sarah's wheeling off one of the most elegant things she's seen at the recycling centre. Possibly one of the oldest, too. So, Gavin, do you think she can update it? Ah, that's a good question. That's a good question. Whether someone can turn it into something a bit more up to date, I'm not sure, but I'd be very intrigued to find out. It really is a beautifully made piece. It's got fine casters and it's a bit faded now, but this kind of furniture definitely has to be saved from the recycling centre. It's got beautiful names stamped on it, and I always think if somebody was proud enough to write their name on it, definitely something that should be saved. Of course, that does not apply to the kids that graffiti my local bus stop. 
After a long search, Sarah has her items. Chrissy's challenge is to carve out a new purpose for the U logs. Neil will try to earn his upcycling badge transforming the worn scout tents. And Sarah will take on the elegant antique table. But can she find a way to update it? Well, they're rushing out, but I have managed to find three things that didn't hit the skips that I think have got huge potential. Loads of work to be done, but you know, I quite enjoy that. In Derbyshire, Sarah has shipped over the huge and heavy hunks of yew tree to Wood Turner Chris. She obviously didn't fancy lugging them over herself. Wow, what amazing wood this is. Really, really excited. Can't wait to hear what Sarah has to say about these beauties. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Chris. How's it going? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? Really well, thanks. Uh, now, I'm hoping you like that rather large delivery that I've sent you. Well, these tree stumps you've had dropped off are amazing. Um, I'm so excited. It's you, you and one of my favourite woods to turn, so well done. <laughs> Good, I'm really pleased you're happy. There's obviously a lot of material there. I've seen some of the large serving bowls that you've made. Do you think that you could make use of the wood like that? Well, no, because uh, the the yew tree is toxic, but it's, it's safe to handle and turn. But yeah, not something you would use to eat out of or drink out of, but decorative items, it's fine. Ah, oh. okay, I see. And have you had any ideas? Yeah, I'm thinking, really, uh, they would make some beautiful candlesticks. What do you think? Oh, I love the sound of candlesticks. And how many do you think you could make? I think uh, a matching pair and then another matching pair, slightly different, uh, about a foot tall, possibly, uh, and they're going to be beautiful. And I think uh, £375 all in. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm happy with that budget. Well, good luck with it. And yeah, sorry for dumping all that on your door. It could be a bit of a challenge. No, well, we all love a challenge, otherwise we wouldn't be doing what we do, Sarah. So thank you so very much. Uh, I think I better crack on with these. And yeah, great talking to you. Speak soon. OK, thanks a lot, Chris. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm going to turn four candlesticks, one matching pair, another matching pair, but each pair slightly different from each other. So I'm really excited need to move on with this now and uh, get some candlesticks turned. Chris has a budget of £375 to try and create two pairs of decorative candlesticks from the U. Turning the unwieldy wood won't be easy, so he may have a serious challenge on his hands. In the riverside town of Marlow, Sarah's heading to see if Neil likes the rather large delivery of tents she sent over. As a scout leader, I can tell these are old-fashioned scout tents. They smell great, uh, they look great. I wonder what Sarah's got in mind. I'm a bit nervous because I'm wondering how Neil feels because I've sent him a massive amount of material, heaps of tents to work on and coming up with a great idea for using as many of them as possible. I think is going to be key to finding the new homes and making a little bit of money. Hi. Oh, Sarah. gosh, they've arrived, have they? Oh, hello, Neil. <laughs> I can just about see you behind those. Yeah, there's plenty of green canvas here, isn't there? And something you're really familiar with, aren't they? Yeah, I must admit, I've slept many a night under these canvas tents, and they are strong. You know, it's lovely material to work with. What have you got in mind? I just think making quite a few bags might be good. I'm thinking they're going to be fairly old, so I suppose the problem is there may be patches that are just not fit for purpose anymore. I guarantee you... There's going to be mucky patches. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look then. Yeah, you've got, you've got mucky bits. OK. It's got some nice details, though. It's got a history to it, hasn't it? And it's certainly good enough fabric. So I'm thinking if I make five smaller, smarter bags, like a messenger bag, old school, school satchel type bags. But there is so much fabric here, so why don't I add another five shopping bags as well as the smart bags? Good plan. Can you put a price on it if you get the panels right and it's not too tricky? Say £50 each for the old school satchel record bags and 
I'll keep the shopping bags really simple and do those for £10 each. So we're looking at 300 quid for the lot? Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Fantastic. I think you've got plenty to be getting on with, so I will be back as soon as you're finished. See you then. Good luck. Well, there's a lot of bags to make. I've just got to find good bits of canvas from all of these old tents. So there's the challenge. Neil has a budget of £300 to try and salvage and reuse the best pieces from the mountain of material. His scout's honour is at stake, so can he pull this one out the bag? As Chris and Neil start work, back home in Sussex, Sarah is working out what to do with the antique table. So, Sarah, what are you thinking? Just in case you're wondering, I won't be cutting this one in half because I think this is actually a beautiful piece of antique furniture. Condition isn't great, so I think I better do a bit of research and see if I can find out when it was made and also what kind of value it's got, and then I'll know what I'm dealing with. Coaching table, occasional table. It's definitely not that. Sarah is first trying to identify what kind of table she has from her big book of antiques. If you don't have one of these books, you could also look online. But Sarah's old school. Sofa table. So it's definitely a sofa table. So what do they say about those? Sofa tables would sit just behind or to the side of sofas and could be wheeled around to be used as a writing desk or to serve tea. They are nearly always on casters. Tick. They were designed with curved legs so that they could be pulled slightly under the sofa, making it more comfortable to use. So I think I know it's a sofa table. Now, how about Seddon? T G Seddon. Sarah is hopping online to try and find out when the sofa table was made. Often companies had stamps that changed over time so you can identify which date range yours comes from if you can find the exact same stamp. Furniture makers T&G Seddon was founded by Thomas Seddon in London in the early 1800s. So the same sort of print is coming up at 1839. So that probably is about right. Their work is collectible. However, value is based on make, model and condition. So a sofa table by T&G Seddon is currently on the market for £6,612.76. What? Six grand? You've hit the jackpot, Sarah. Champagne all round. Admittedly, it does look slightly fancier than the one I've got my hands on. Oh, I might have got a bit carried away there. Just a lager, please. I have a feeling that this table is simpler than lots of the tables that are listed here. But nonetheless, it's made by an important, recognised maker. If this makes any money, I'll be delighted. But the fact it's not going to end up being crushed, I think, is all that needs to happen to it. Of course. It's not the money that's important, he said unconvincingly. So I have actually found a London store, an antique dealer, that has sold some Seddon before, and I've arranged to give him a call, so hopefully I can get hold of him. See what he has to say. If you're unsure about a piece of furniture, you could try asking a local antiques dealer for advice. Yeah, well, uh, I popped a couple of pictures over on the email. Did you have a chance to look at them? If you're looking for a valuation, however, Make sure to send pictures of any wear and damage, as this can greatly affect the price. Oh. So, Sarah, what's the verdict? So you describe it as very late and very ordinary. That doesn't make it sound that expensive. Oh, that doesn't sound too promising. Maybe Sarah would have been just as well cutting it up. Sarah hasn't spent a penny so far, so everything generated from the sale will be profit. If she's able to make a sale, that is. In Derbyshire, Chris has had the great chunks of yew tree cut down into more manageable chunks at his local sawmill. 
and is starting to fashion them into two pairs of candlesticks. So I am just taking my time here. There is an area there where there was a branch, so it's quite tough. I can't see what's called the ghost image as it's spinning around, so I just really have to be very cautious at this point. The piece of yew appears translucent as it spins. Wood turners would ordinarily use this as a visual guide to chip away at, but Chris has had to create his own methods. I'm using my finger against the back of the tool rest as a bit of a depth gauge, so I'm running it along, so I'm keeping it as cylindrical as I can just by touch. And obviously with being blind, I don't have to look at what I'm doing. I can even do it with my eyes shut, so there you go. It should go without saying, but please don't try this at home. I'm very happy with that now. It is pretty much cylindrical, and I can move on to the next step now to get my talking tape measure and lay out some dimensions. 11 and 15 sixteenths inches, 12 inches. There we go. So that's how the blind measure. Amazing bit of kit. So. I'm going to start the lathe and just put a groove in. Chris is making a reference groove so he knows where the bottom of his 12-inch candlestick will be. He's also making reference points for his design. It's going to be quite classical and elegant and it's going to have almost a long spring onion sort of shape. Chris is starting to shape the candlestick with only a visual image in his mind to work from. So he's just kind of vibing it. This particular piece of view, it's still got some moisture in it. It isn't completely dry, so there is some flex and movement in it. Moisture content can greatly affect the shape of turned wood as it shrinks as it dries. One advantage of wetter wood is that it produces continuous ribbon shavings that are relatively dust-free, which is important when you're working with a toxic wood like you. I'm pretty much ready to start sanding this now. And what I am going to have to do is, because it is you, the wood species, not you, Oh, don't get me started. I am going to have my respirator slash face mask. Yew trees contain highly poisonous taxane alkaloids in all parts of the tree. So lots of caution is needed when working with it. Before Chris started sanding, he first added some wax, which acts as a grain filler and also clumps the harmful dust particles together, making it safer to turn. I'm really pleased with how it's progressing and ready for turning the next one. So we've got a matching pair. Chris was just vibing the design on the first candlestick, but now he has the trickier task of replicating it to make a pair. Good luck, Chris. I'm glad it's you and not me. Oh, not again. In Marlow, Neil is unpacking the old tents that he's going to attempt to repurpose into stylish bags. Right. Sarah wants record bags, so the size and shape of an old record. And I've managed to drag one out of an old collection, and that will be my template. The Scouts famously use themes from the Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. The Cub Master is referred to as the Wolf, Arcala, but we all know which character would be most suited for Neil. Yup, Bagheera. Just hope it's not too grotty. Neil needs to work out if he has the bare necessities to make the 10 bags he's promised Sarah. So I've cut out about 20 odd. I still haven't quite worked out the design, but what I do know is these tents are really old and there's probably not a lot of waterproofing left. Neil is applying a dib-dib-dib and a dab-dab-dab of wax to the tent canvas and is using an iron to melt it into the woven cotton, which he hopes will form a barrier to repel water. Right, quick waterproof test. Perfect. 
Waterproofing done, Neil is picking out some leather to complement the canvas. So we've got this lovely old canvas, so I'm going to contrast it with some bright coloured leather. This is all industry waste fabrics, but really nice colourful leather. This will go on the bottom of the flap. Just to make it different, you know, the canvas is nice, but adding leather to it is going to take it to the next level. Neil wants his record bags to be sturdy as well as stylish, and is hoping the addition of recycled leather will give them a more luxurious look. Bit of colourful leather, bit of really old faded canvas. I think this is going to look quite unique. Neil is cutting out tent fabric for the rest of the bag, which will have straps, a slip pocket on the back, as well as a padded lining. See, so it all starts to add up and get quite bulky. We've got layers of thick, heavy tent canvas, upholstery leather, and some wadding to go in the middle. So it does start to get a bit tough. Neil might be making progress with bag number one, but with nine still to make, he's certainly not out of the woods yet. In West Sussex, Sarah has finished researching the old sofa table. But was it worth a pretty penny? Or did she get her saw and paint brushes out after all? The more I look at this piece of furniture, the more I love it, I think it's got such quality written all over it. And I just hope it finds a good home. As the Bard once wrote, to upcycle or not upcycle? That is the question. Well, it was something like that. Sarah decided the elegant curves and Georgian styling of the sofa table should be celebrated, so she's left it as it is. With only a minor repair to the trim on the front, Sarah has retained the table's age and wear in the hope it could be the perfect project for a professional restorer who could really bring it back to its best. But with question marks surrounding its value, has Sarah made the right choice for producing profit? So you've probably noticed that there hasn't been a striking improvement in the table. I haven't cut it up, I haven't painted it, but I've done that for a reason, because I think I could actually devalue it by adding to it. But they don't make them like this anymore, so that is why it needs to be preserved and found a home where somebody really loves it. Hi, Hello. how are you? Hi, I'm Hi. Sarah. Sarah pounced on Gavin when she saw his old table. It was my mother's bedside table. It was a bit dated for Gavin's liking. We're kind of modernising. This just doesn't fit with the, uh, the new look. So Sarah took it on. But could it be updated? I'm not sure, but I'd be very intrigued to find out. Well, Gavin, Sarah hoped someone would like it just the way it was. And after sharing photos online, she did find a buyer. But was the table as valuable as she'd hoped? Sarah's in Buckinghamshire to tell Gavin what happened to his table and hand over the profit. Hello, Gavin. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, very nice to see you. The mm. table that arrived at the recycling centre was something that really caught my eye. Yeah. And it actually had a maker's mark on it for her T&G Seddon. Right. Who are right. actually really quite smart makers of furniture. I haven't done a huge amount to it, I haven't polished it, so I've pictures right. here to show you. Right. So actually, not mm. a lot has been done. A polish up. Beautifully polished, isn't it? That really has brought out the, it did, the wood. It did have a bit, of, a bit of a sheen to it. So I thought the best thing to do with it was to have some valuations done, mm -hmm. um, just to check out exactly the ballpark of what it should be, to say that it has found a new home. Oh, good, yes. <laughs> so okay. profit has been generated. Oh. Uh, I've got a thousand pounds here for you. You're joking. No. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm 
Astonished. That's uh, that's great news. That's that's fantastic. I, I'm 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 astounded that it's uh, worth, that it was worth that much to somebody. I'm just so glad you were there to stop me. Literally about to throw it into the skip at that, that particular moment, wasn't I? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can you think of what you might do with it? I think something like um, a cancer charity would be an appropriate place for it to go to. Definitely. I've I've lost some relatives to to cancer, um, so I feel that this would be good way of giving something back. That is a huge amount of money mm. to donate it to is, charity. It is, but um, why not? It's lovely. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a great result. Thank you very much indeed. An absolute pleasure. So thank nice Thank you to very see. much. And thank you for the table. Anything else you're throwing away, <laughs> you can run it by me first. Yeah, I'll I, will you. Do. I will do. I will thank do. Thank you so much. OK. okay. Nice Bye. to see you again, Bye -bye. Gavin. Sarah didn't spend a penny polishing up the sofa table. It was sold to a private buyer for £1,000 meaning Gavin has a profit of £1,000 that he's going to donate to a cancer charity. Brilliant. After getting top dollar for the table, Sarah's in Derbyshire to find out if Chris has managed to turn the used stumps into two pairs of candlesticks. The wood did put up a struggle, but yeah, I mean, it's paid off all the hard work and I absolutely love them. I have no idea how Chris is going to have managed to transform those huge, unwieldy bits of live you into something that is turned delicate and saleable. So anything could have happened with this one. If you're clearing space in the garden, remember that an old tree stump could be turned into something new. Chris has burned the candle at both ends to produce two pairs of hand-turned candle holders. The two taller sticks are identical in shape, only differing in the gorgeous grain patterns created in the U. Chris has also fashioned two urn-like holders for bigger candles, which have been waxed and oiled to bring out the natural orange colour of the wood with nails embedded on top to hold candles firmly in place. Chris has tried to create something that is practical as well as elegant. But will Sarah be impressed? Chris. Hi, Sarah. Gosh, they look amazing. Well, thank you very much. I, I think that they have a great look. Two pairs, nice to have a bit of contrast. I went with two different styles, almost an, an urn style for the yeah. smaller one. And then you have the columns, the turn columns. I love the way they feel. They're so warm and tactile. With being blind, it's a sensory experience for me. Uh, and who can't not want to hold them? I can tell you from where I'm standing, they look absolutely amazing. The colour, all the fantastic grain in them. And I'm really loving the fact that they are so similar as pairs. Well, what I did was I just went with a mental image right. for the first one. Yep. And then using calipers to take different diameters. Eventually, when you've done all the calculations and removed what you need to remove, hopefully you've got two very similar pieces. Oh, I absolutely love the aesthetic, but where did you end up on the money? I was hoping for 375 for the pairs. We came in bang on budget, so, yeah, we're, uh, we're spot on with the uh, budget. Thanks so much for all your hard work, and I will get those shipped out as soon as I found them a new home. But so nice to see you, Chris. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Bye. 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 The results are really impressive. They feel so nice. Sarah loves them, and they'll make someone very happy. I'm very sure of that. Hello there. At the recycling centre, Sarah spotted Mark's U stumps. Bit of landscaping going on, a uh, new summer house. Yeah, just clearing some space. The wood was fiendishly heavy. If you cut one of these down, you don't need to go to the gym, perhaps. <laughs> but that didn't stop Sarah lugging them off. In my head, the only thing I can think of is sculpture-y thing, but that's probably why I'm not an artist. <laughs> well, they are sculpture-y things now, Mark. And after they were advertised, the taller pair were sold to a glamping company in Kent. And sales manager Abby is lit up. Oh, I love the candlesticks. They just give the, the whole place a bit more of an atmosphere. They're handmade as well, and it just 
Adds a bit of romance too, which is always good. The smaller set of candlesticks were also sold to a natural homeware shop in Ashbourne. Owner Joe is delighted. I like the natural materials, I love the wood. It's a local artisan um, and it's a great story behind it. So it'd be a good talking point. Sarah's in Flatwell Heath to show Mark what has become of his tree stumps and hand over some cash. Hello, Mark. Oh, hiya. How are you doing? I'm really well. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, how's the gardening project going? I haven't even broke the back yet. Yeah, it's uh, going slowly. Well, I'm not surprised. Those uh, chunks of timber that turned up at the recycling centre, the chunks were the heaviest things I have, I've ever seen. I was surprised, actually, when you said you wanted it. Oh, fair enough. Well, there's loads of bits of wood that turn up at the recycling centre, but yours were particularly appealing and um, they've been taken on by a fantastic guy named Chris. OK, cool. So I've got pictures here to show you what ah, he's been doing. Yeah. Excellent. They've been turned into two pairs of candlesticks. You know what, that is top. That's really nice. They're really, really nice. They're all natural colours that um, come out um, when the wood is turned. That's stunning, that's, that's really good. Yeah, I'm really impressed with that. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Um, and I've actually got profit for you. <laughs> it gets better. To the tune of £75. Oh, brilliant. Oh, excellent. What might you do with it? Well, I've got two of my daughter's birthdays this week, so um, no, no doubt I won't see a touch of this one. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Well, I was really pleased. You doesn't turn up at the recycling centre very often, so I was really pleased when, when yours did and I was there. So nice to <laughs> catch right. up. Thanks so much. Hey, no worries. Bye -bye. Take care. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. Chris came in on budget at £375. Both pairs of candlesticks were sold for a total of £450, meaning Mark has a profit of £75 to spend on birthday treats for his daughters. Lovely. With two items taken care of, Sarah's in Marlow to see if Neil has managed to reinvent the tents as a collection of practical bags. I think Sarah's going to like these. It's the old canvas, but I've added uh, some colour and some embellishments, which I think she's going to like. Well, I left Neil with an absolute heap of scout tents, but he is a scout leader, so he should be all over this. I mean, every day he promises to do his best, to do his duty and to do a good turn. Hopefully it's my day to have a good turn. The old tents were obsolete, worn and on the outs with the scouts. But in Neil's hands... They can live on with a fresh new purpose as 10 trendy bags. Neil has expertly combined the old canvas with recycled leather to create five record satchels, all with their own individual colour scheme. He's also stitched five sturdy tote bags, which are large enough to fit all your essentials into, and have been finished with a button fastening. Each bag's canvas has been washed and waterproofed, so the former tents will keep your contents protected from the elements. But will Neil's designs and colour choices light Sarah's fire? Hey, hi, how are you? Yeah, good. Here's your old canvas tents. They're not what I was expecting. That colour's great. It's all the old canvas, just not the dirtiest bits. That's fantastic. They are a really interesting colour. I had no idea that, that that looks really sort of almost country and quite cool, doesn't it? And yeah, hopefully they look good. They look more than good. They look pristine and loads of bags. They look a lot when you put 10 bags together, don't they? Yeah, then I added some leather and some pockets, some straps, some metal, and I think they've come out quite nicely. Yeah, I'm just trying to take them all in. Uh, these shoppers are great, but those record bags look so cool. What I've done is I've, I've sort of matched up and got all the different bits of leather that uh, I had in stock. So we've got just lots of lovely colours, really. Excellent. Well, I really like the colour choices you've made and the decisions that you took to, to make them look like that. I think they're really impressive. I, I was really pleased to actually make some proper bags for life. There's no plastic. It's reusing something at the end of its life. And to be honest, they are tough. It's gonna, they're going to go on for a long time now. Did the budget stretch, though? It was £50 for all of those and then £50 each for the messengers, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Uh, once they were all cut up, then it was straightforward, so we're on budget. Well done. Uh, definitely lived up to your scout promise this time. Thank you very much. This is my good turn. Oh, lovely. Have a good day. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. 
I'm glad Sarah was pleased. I mean, after spending so many nights under these, this kind of canvas, um, it was nice when they reached the end of their life to actually give them another life and uh, add some color. Sarah was happy, I'm happy. When Sarah spotted Adrian unloading the old tents, she couldn't see them hit the skip. Hello there. I was just looking. There is a monumental amount of tentage so in there. Lots of tents, yeah. We don't use these anymore. Um, these are just too heavy and the scouts are getting smaller. Um, <laughs> so they can't carry them. They are something I think could be repurposed. Any okay. chance I could take yeah. a couple away? Track on, yeah. Adrian was more than happy for Sarah to take them on, but had no idea what she could do with them. Apart from tents, I can't think of anything else that they could be, but uh, I'll, I'll wait to be surprised. Well, Adrian, surprise! Sarah shared photos of the bags online. And four of the record bags were sold to a pre-loved fashion store in Shrewsbury. Owner Emma thinks they'll be a big hit. I like the bags because they are made from recycled fabric, and that they're unique. Once people come in and have a look at them, they, they shouldn't last very long. But did Sarah manage to sell the rest? She's in Maidenhead to show Adrian what's become of the old tents and hopefully dish out some dosh. Hello, Adrian. Oh, hiya. Hello, how are you? Very well, thank you. And you? Yes, very Good. well, thank you. Very well. Um, so those old tents, you'd had for ages, hadn't you? Yeah, I had about 10 years. We'd never used tents before and they're really heavy. So we decided just to, to get rid of them, really. There is a fantastic bag maker who is also a scout leader. Oh, right. And he is passionate about recycling. Okay. And this is what's happened to the section he made into bags. Wow, they're pretty cool. He has created a range of shoppers and messenger bags. Yeah, very nice. Do you still recognise all the scout colours? Um, yeah, the, the, obviously the greens. Excellent, I think they're really nice, yeah. Um, and I'm pleased to say that those uh, the bags are sold. I've got two left to sell, but I have got profit for you. <gasps> <laughs> but I've actually got £275 wow. pounds profit here for the ones that I've sold already. Excellent. That's really good. I know what it's going to go towards. It's going to go towards a new tent. Is it? So, yeah. So the, uh, the Scouts use dining shelters, um, and this will actually buy one of those. Yeah, oh, so brilliant. Really pleased. I think that's so exciting. Yeah, I love absolutely. a bit of outdoor dining and camping, so yeah. that's right up my street. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thank nice you. to see you again, Adrian. Bye-bye. So, bye. -bye. Neil created 10 bags from the tent canvas for £300. And since Sarah caught up with Adrian, one more bag was sold, bringing total sales to £650, leaving Adrian with a profit of £350 that he's going to put towards new camping equipment for his scout troop. Sarah saved three things from hitting the skips. The antique table has been saved and sent off to a new home. The yew stumps have been hand turned into decorative candlesticks. And the tent canvas has been repurposed and will now live on as a collection of sustainable bags. Well, Chris and Neil worked flat out to repurpose redundant materials into beautiful handcrafted items. Things that were going to be lost have been saved and will be put into good use for many more years to come.